everyone for being here today. Uh, it's good to see everyone to start uh, to start camp. Uh, we had a, a really good first day of practice. I was pleased with what I saw. Players played fast and uh, and it was efficient. We had a very productive day. Um, you can tell the players are in really good shape. Coach Novak and the staff have done a ph phenomenal job with these guys getting them in shape, you know, mentally and physically. And uh, it showed that they were able to, to play fast today and, and we finished strong and, and really good effort on spe and special teams as well. Uh, we had, you know, meetings. Yesterday was report day. We had, we had meetings um, pretty much all afternoon. And uh, I don't know if you saw on social media, but the, the, the players got a chance to see the new locker room. And that was pretty exciting. Um, it was, uh, you don't really get that, that type of excitement in a, in a locker room unless it's after a big win. And it was a, it was very, very similar uh, type of feel. So I was happy for the guys to, to finally get back, get back home. And uh, so we'll be in there from now on and preseason pre camp and th throughout the season. Uh, like I said, in, with Big Ten Media Day last week, I'm excited about this team. Um, we got a lot of talent and uh, a lot of good players, really good coaching staff, top to bottom. Um, but we got a lot of, we have a lot of work ahead of us. So with that, I'll open up for questions. Got some water over there. Uh, going off of that, at Big Ten Football Media Days, yeah. you said that this team was hungry, determined, focused. Thanks. So how did you see those three words play out as you stepped onto the practice field today? The hung you know, their hunger and focus and how the determined they were. Yeah, I can really uh, I measure those things by, uh, you know, how they uh, go about their business, you know, the coaches and players, uh, the meetings preparation for meetings you come in the guys are they're ready they got the notebooks out they're ready to go they're sitting up straight uh, transition between meetings you go from the team meeting to the special teams meeting O and D you know guys are on top of it they're moving they're moving quickly and then you know how they transition on the field from drill to drill well, working with a sense of urgency and uh, how they finish plays and finish drills that was a big point of emphasis uh, start to finish you know guys were finishing through the line finishing through the cone and that that shows me that they're you know they're hungry and they're focused there's there's a sense of urgency. Mel in the back. Depth is another thing you've talked about since you've gotten here and addressed that this is, you said this is the deepest team. I know it's one day on the practice field, but how do you see that, the depth of this team kind of playing out? Yeah, much improved. I mean, I, I was just talking to one of my good friends who's an NFL, NFL personnel guy, NFL scout, and that was the first thing he, first thing he mentioned to me. He's, you know, he comes, he's been here, coming here every year, uh, you know, even before I got here. And he could tell that, uh, you know, we've added some players Especially uh, on the defensive line up front, and uh, so it's uh, it's really evident in in, uh, in those in those two areas: offensive line, defensive line. You know, bigger guys, more guys available and capable, and uh, and we also added three running backs. So uh, you know, we we definitely have a lot of competition at each position. And on the front here. Um, last time you guys practiced, obviously Kate, or, uh, Peyton was still around. Like, what have you seen from those guys? I know it's only day one, but you know, obviously with the competition and, and you, you know, want to know who the starter is going to be. Exactly. <laughs> you can get out of the way. And we won't ask you any more about it. <laughs> I doubt that. I doubt that. No, I mean, what I saw today was a really good competition. I was impressed with those guys. I mean, Jay Johnson is is an excellent coach. He's you know he's a he's a very good teacher, and uh, you know I've seen him bring. You know uh, Noah along and Caden along and, and then and Sam has even gotten better since he, since he's been here in a short period of time because we were able to work with him over the summer. So um, you know very good competition, uh, a lot of good balls being thrown, uh, really good communication. Guys on the same page with the formations, the checks. So it was it was good work out of that group. Yeah. No, I'm wondering if anybody caught your eye in terms of guys who got here in the summer, freshmen or transfers. Yeah, uh, guys got here over the summer. Yeah, Jalen, Sammy. Um, he, you know, he played for us as a redshirt freshman at Colorado. Uh, big, you know, 6'5", 300 pound uh, defensive tackle. He's a massive human being. And um, he's really light on his feet. And, uh, you, know, he, uh, you know, he adds to the depth and makes us uh, more competitive there. Um, got a chance to see Jonathan Kim today, the kicker. Ball, you know, jumps off the off his foot. He's got a really, really strong leg. So, uh, you know, that was, uh, that was impressive. Uh, Sam Levitt, you know, he came, he came this summer. Um, you know he's he's gotten better since he's been here. He's very competitive. Competitive. He's very athletic. Um, you know he's very focused. He's a, he's a really smart guy. So we had you know quite a few guys that you know they got here and uh, and I was just impressed with it with the group. It's a it's a better vibe uh, 
with this group. You know, we talk about toughness, discipline, and being selfless. And uh, I told the guys if we can if we can uh, be a selfless football team, they're able to just buy into the team concept. Um, you know, buy into something that's bigger than themselves, and we'll have a really good chance to have a good season. Yeah, Audrey. Mel, um, I know you don't talk about injuries, oh, yeah. and you know it's obviously day one, with long camp ahead. But w with Nick sitting out today, what did you see from the younger centers, Wigginton and Fincher, and if they get to a point where they might need to play, mm -hmm. what experience that they got last year? How how does that translate to that position in particular? Yeah, those, they're good players, and uh, you know we brought them here to play. You know, Geno can also play in there, and uh, you know. Coach Cap, as you know, is a really good coach. He can develop players, and guys have to learn multiple positions. So I feel good about our depth there. I mean, you're talking about, you know, Nick being out, but then you're talking about another three guys that can play the spot. And I'm not sure if we were in that position a year ago. Mel, over over here. The uh, I know at receiver, that's a position where your head can spin early on for for freshmen. I'm wondering some of the second year guys like Terrell Henry, Antonio Gates. Like, what what step do you expect them to take, and what do you see from them? Yeah, so you look at like Glover, uh, Gates, and, uh, and Tyrell, um, just consistency and performance because they're all very talented guys and that's how they got here. Uh, and they all have flashed in the past. I think, uh, you know, at some point in time uh, a year ago, you know, we, we all said these guys, these guys are going to be really good players. Um, but the key to it is consistency and performance, you know, doing it day in and day out. Uh, they all can run. They got good ball skills, they can catch, they're smart, they're competitive, they're willing blockers. So um, I just think with, you know, really good um, practice habits and a really good competition and, and Coach Hawk coaching those guys up, I think they will become more consistent. But that's the next step because there's no, there's no doubt that they have the talent to be able to do it. Let's just do it on a consistent basis. Hey, Mel, today definitely is a high with starting up, but just reflecting back, there was a horrible life-changing experience with the campus. <clears throat> excuse me, tragedy. So with your high standards, how are you going to prioritize the mental health of the players going mm -hmm. forward after everything that's been going on? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's a, that's a great question because uh, it's, it's been a, a point of emphasis here. We have quite a few mental health practitioners. As a matter of fact, I have a meeting today uh, with a, one of the practitioners I'm talking about a plan for you know, moving forward with the players. Um, and. Uh, I can remember, you know, back in a, you know, back in early in my career, where, you know, it, you really didn't even talk about mental health. It was kind of like taboo. Um, you know, guys didn't want to come forward, say say things. They didn't, they didn't want to go see anybody, and they, they didn't trust. You know, and you know, even some of the, some coaches didn't. You know, they didn't want guys talking to the players, or maybe you know, uh, thinking maybe you're going to make an excuse for the players and things like that. But it's not like that here. Especially, and so uh, I mean, you, even going back, I mean, Lonnie Rosen has been here for years and years and years, and uh, you know, back here in '97 and '98, when I was a was a graduate assistant, he was involved with the players, and it's just grown. He goes like from he was one guy, now we have a team of men and women that are working with our players uh, with all types of uh, you know mental health uh, issues. Uh, and then actually, and also like performance type things to, things to enhance performance. And so it's, uh, and our players, you know, they don't, my, I mean, uh, countless guys that, you know, come forward, you know, and say, hey, coach, can you, can you put me in contact? You know, someone that, you know, I can talk to. Or you ask a player, hey, do you want to talk to someone? And they'll, you know, look at you and they say, yeah, I would like to talk to someone. And say, okay, boom, I'll make a call. And then, you know, we're getting them in like the next, the very next, the same day or the next day. You know, so it's uh, in our new facility. Uh, you know, we're going to have a, a dedicated space, like where our players' lounge is now, where it used to be. Uh, that's going to be converted to the, the offices for the mental health uh, for the uh, for the student athletes. So, uh, and they'll have multiple entrances. You know, which is important. Uh, you know, and it's for for all of the student athletes. You know, different ways to access it. You know, which makes it just a lot easier and, and more comfortable for the student athletes to you know get in there, get out, you know, get the get the help that they need. So um, I think our athletic department, you know, I know Alan Haller has been a he's he's, he's been a strong advocate, um, and it's it's only getting better. So I feel really good where we are. We always can get better, you know. But uh, I feel like our players are 
and our coaches are, are very well supported. All right, so yep, no, thank you. Mel, well, you, you mentioned the, the vibe feeling better. It was talked about last week with some of the players as well. They just, it, it feels, feels better this year. And, and I know there's a lot of off season camaraderie, all those sort of things. Can you pinpoint maybe last year things that you saw that said to you, hey, we need to become a tighter team? We, we're missing something. Can you recall what the, if there was a moment where you're like, hey, we're missing this and we need to create that more, and, and, and what steps you guys have done to do that and why it's important? I'm not sure if I could point to a, to a, to an instance, uh, a particular situation or a point in time. I just know that in order to have a have a good football team, you know, you have to you know you have to have a really good team chemistry, and and so obviously, you know, you know if you you have to improve in in, uh, in areas, and that's one of the the first areas that you look to is like, okay, do these guys care about each other? You know, are are they team oriented? Are they selfless? Um, you know, do they trust the coaches? Do the coaches trust them? Do they trust each other? Uh, do we have the do we have a, a good ability to hold each other accountable? And so, um, you know, we were very um, intentional about improving in all those areas, and it's it's really it's, it's showing right now. And, and for the players to, to say that they, that it feels different, they can tell. Um, you know, I would that, that means that it's it's actually working. It's actually happening because the players don't they don't lie. Going off of the good vibes talk, it seemed like yesterday would, was a perfect time to mm-hmm. unveil the new locker room mm-hmm. on the eve of fall camp. How mm-hmm. did you maybe see the players have a little extra pep in their step as mm-hmm. well after seeing this brand new locker room for them? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I tell you what, it was, uh, it was interesting. That was, that was my, first, uh, my first experience in all the places I've been to see players going to a new locker room. I've seen it on social media and things like that, but that was my first time seeing it uh, live and in person and it, it, it means a lot for our team it means a lot for our players but it means a lot for our program um, you know one of the first things that uh, coach D'Antonio told me when once I got here in, in, in that February 2020 he said hey Mel you, you know you got to get a new facility you know you have to get that done we got to get that done here and 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 I knew that I mean we were towards the bottom in the league it's really hard to recruit that way because um, not not, and not only do you want to get the players here, but you, you, want, to have, you want them to have a good experience while they're here. And a locker room like that, um, you know, that shows a commitment to excellence and, and uh, pouring into our players and, and caring about them and, and wanting them to you know, have the best facilities. Uh, there was a, you know, we've been displaced. So our players uh, before yesterday, their, their, locker room, uh, their locker room was in the stadium. And uh, that created some ch- some challenges. I mean, you guys, you know, catching the bus, you know, riding bikes, taking scooters from the locker room to the meeting room is not a good situation. And, and before that, you know, guys were spending you know an hour, hour and a half, two hours after practice uh, in the locker room, and and uh, you know that's that's part of it. that's the, that's a big part of the team. It's, it's the guys having a home, and it was it was not like that. And the players complained about it, um, and they knew that it was just necessary, but. You know they were they they brought it up to me several players saying you know we we need to you know we need to you know have our space you know where we can where we can come together and so um, I think that was uh, all of that it's kind of part of that excite, excitement that you that you uh, that we saw yesterday it wasn't so much that that hey I got a new locker but you know we have our home back I think is probably more important. Mel. I think you have 25 practices before the That's first right. game. That's right. How is day one this morning different than any other animal, if, if any? Yeah, day one's always uh, is always special. I mean, the guys, you know, we all work in the out of season, um, you know, and to get to the point where we can we can get to the first practice in fall camp and uh, and have a chance. You don't know exactly what it's going to look like until you actually get them out there, and uh, until you like get them on the grass, get them lined up, start doing the drills. And it was as good of a first day as I've been around in terms of guys knowing what to do, uh, the practice organization. I mean, I took very few notes today in terms of what we need to improve in like the practice organization, the attention to detail. You know, all that was there, um, and you know, there's a lot of nervous energy. You know, especially with some of the young guys. You know, we've got new coaches out there too. We got new coaches. We got new young coaches. Like I saw Antoine Simmons out there. I said, "Hey, man, 
uh, I was you in 1997, you know, first day, same field right here, you know, first day, first day of practice, you know, trying to start a career. So um, it's an exciting time, you know, for, for everyone. You got the, some of the older guys I had. I, I think we had like 35 guys stand up this morning or raise their hand. They're six year, uh, fifth year, fourth year players. So, you know, we've got guys, like I said, like Noah Kim, Jordan Simmons, guys, you, you guys were here, uh, you know, when I got here. It was our first time. This is year, year four for us. And, uh, and so you got guys that have, you know, kind of been through it, been through COVID, been through 11 and 2, been through 5 and 7, and now we have an opportunity with a, with a you know, more depth and more talent um, to really do something with this team. So, uh, you know, the first day is a time to get out there and, and get to work. And it's one day at a time. Now, yeah, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to, like, bring it from here, you know, as opposed to right here. Um, so I plan, I plan on not losing it this, this year for the first time in 27 years. Mel, uh, I'm wondering about a guy, Kyrie Crump, Crump. Who, yeah, who is back first practice since October. I wondered, first of all, his journey to get back to the field, what that w has been like, and has there been any reassessment on the Big Ten on the eight games for this year, or is it pretty much he's going to miss those first eight games? And what can he bring for you guys? Yeah, it's pretty much, you know, what it is. I mean, I, I haven't seen any, I haven't heard anything or read anything or gotten any emails or anything about any reassessment. So, um, you know, he's back. He, you know, he, he, uh, he's learned and he's back on our team and he's out there practicing, you know. So, um, you know, and he's, uh, you know, he stayed the course. And, um, you know, he's supported by his teammates and by the coaching staff. Now with the running backs, Nate Carter obviously is new. There's been videos of him squatting, I think, like 600 pounds. Just, what I know. Is, <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. What has he brought to the room, the running back room, but also the weight room, too, for you guys? Yeah, well, I mean, he, he came in the weight. He, he, he walked in the door ready to work, and he was very impressive in the weight room. I mean, if you see, if you see the guy, he's, he's built pretty well. Um, you know, he's, a good, he's a good player, and... Uh, you know, he's not real, you know, not very talkative. He's just a really hard worker. Um, he gives a uh, very strong effort um, in special teams and, you know, on offense. And, uh, you know, in the spring, you know, he ran the ball hard and got some tough yards. He's got some bursts and acceleration, you know, through traffic. He's got good vision and he's got good ball skills. He can catch the ball and he's a willing blocker and pass pro. So, um, you know, he's a good addition. We'll just see how you know how he how he develops, um, but I'm glad I'm glad he's here, certainly. Well, a hundred years of Spartan Stadium. That's right. Uh, long before the woodshed or anybody in this room. Long before you. For me, even two years before oh, me. Yeah, yeah. couple, couple, <laughs> couple. Uh, How much do your guys know about the history and the great moments of this place? And would you consider bringing back like one of the the heroes of great games before every home game? Before every home, that's a pretty good idea. You got Matt Larson there; is a good. They can take that to Laronda and Ben, and maybe good idea. I think you should huddle up with them and maybe come up with something. I'm not sure how much our guys know about you know going way way back, um, but uh, I, I think we all know how, how how special Spartan Stadium is, and you know the woodshed, and there's been a lot of good football played uh, in there, and. Uh, and we just had the, the former players back um, just recently, last weekend, and uh, they come back from all eras, you know, go, you know, coming like way back guys. And, uh, you know, there's, a, there's a, a, a high standard of performance in that, in that stadium. And I played, uh, I played uh, golf with Kirk Gibson a couple, in, a, in an outing uh, a couple weeks ago. And, uh, I mean, he'd be the first to tell you, you know, you know, he's like, hey, Tuck. You know, what type of team you, what type, what, what type of team we got this year? You got anybody to go across the middle? And he start calling out plays. You know, you run this play, come across the middle. All I got to do is catch it, beat the safety. That's a touchdown. You know, I mean, he's, you know, he's reliving those moments in that stadium. So, uh, you know, it's important. It's uh, tradition is important. Um, I was talking to one of our donors uh, last night, and uh, we we're just talking about the Big Ten. And uh, she was asking me about the difference between the Big Ten and SEC and, and all that. And, and she's, you know, grown up as a Big, as a big Ten fan in, in Iowa. And so we were just talking about the tradition of the Big Ten and the stadiums and the bands 
um, and just the standard of performance and how Big Ten football just feels a certain way, it looks a certain way, the expectation is that, you know, uh, the, game is, the games are played a certain way. And, uh, and Spartan, Spartan Stadium is just, uh, you know, it just embodies all of those feelings, all of those emotions. You know, to, I, met, I met a lady, uh, I saw, ran into a, a lady at Whole Foods last night on the way home and uh, she was saying that uh, she's been like, a, they've been like season ticket holders for like 40 years or something like that. And she, and she was, uh, couldn't wait for the season to get started. And, uh, and she said, you know, it's uh, just a special time of year. So, you know, a hundred years. And it's also a good reminder as, uh, of, you know, for players and coaches that, hey, you know, uh, Michigan State's gonna play football whether we're here or not. You know, what's gonna, what's, what, what is our legacy gonna be while we're here? You know, and it's, uh, it's a high bar, very high bar. I'm just wondering from the uh, mid-year guys, the true freshmen that, that were here in the winter and went through spring practice, you know, the Jordan Halls of the world, have you seen from them the progression they made, you know, the benefit from being here for that whole 15 practices? Yeah, I mean, it, I have, I'm asked this question of recruiting all the time, especially from the parents. Like, what, is, what are some of the benefits uh, to coming early? And there's quite a few. Uh, first is, you know, academically, you get a chance to get a full semester under your belt a full load, uh, get, off, get a chance to get, get off to a, a fast start, a good start, without the pressures of having to play a game uh, like you would if you came in in the fall. Because when you come in, in the summer, you know, you got summer school, that's not, like, that's not a full load, and then all of a sudden school starts and the season starts, it can be overwhelming for guys. You also get, you know, eight, eight nine weeks of strength and conditioning, uh, and during those times we're able to meet with guys um, and introduce the scheme and the philosophy and the culture and things like that. And then get 15 spring practices, you know, uh, three, you know, Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday over five weeks um, to, to, you know, learn the playbook and learn the, you know, how we practice and get in there competing and, and things like that. And so, you know, guys like you mentioned Jordan Hall, you know, he, he was one of those guys. So uh, he can, you know, go in the finals, have the discretionary time off, come back for the summer program another eight weeks, and he already knows the playbook and he's in shape. And he knows what to expect from the coaching staff. His teammates know him. He can help the younger guys. The other guys are coming in in June, you know, help them, uh, help them transition. And so he gets the chance to learn the system again over the summer during the meeting time that we do have. And so when we start fall camp, he's getting the system, the installation for the third time. You know, so that gives him a, a much better chance to, to be able to compete, to play, and earn a role out there. So, um, and you see that. I mean, he comes in. He was, he was never a guy. He, in particular, was not a guy that was seemed overwhelmed by, uh, you know, like the magnitude. It wasn't. It didn't seem like he was. Uh, it was too big for him. But um, you know, once you go through an out of season, spring ball, and then a summer program, and you go into fall camp, you know, these those guys that do that, they look a little different. You know, they're they're just kind of just their focus, um, just being able to to sustain and practice. You know, move from one play to the next, um, more consistently is just uh, you know it's just. Uh, it's a benefit, and he, I mean, he's, you know, all those guys that come mid-year, and you're going to, I think you're going to see, because of some of the rule changes, you're going to see more and more guys uh, come in mid-year, even some of these high schools that have not allowed that, you see it in recruiting, they're starting to change their policy so that the kids can get out mid-year, because the kids, they won't go to those high schools if they, if they can't graduate early. All right, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Go Green.